Hey, I have an idea. We could do a flash mob and perform one of our songs. Yeah, then they'll get tickets to the show. Uh, I don't know, guys. I think posters will be enough. No, come on. It'll be so fun. <gasps> we could do it at lunch. Yeah. No, 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 no. All right. Five, six, seven. No. All right. Raise your hand if you did theater in high school. Really? That's everyone? <clears throat> Zip. Zap. Zop. Ugh, dang dang it. it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Believe it or not, there are thousands, no, millions of theater kids walking among us every day, and we are none the wiser. They lie dormant in our neighborhoods, at our workplaces, on our bus routes, just waiting to break into song. You may think they're listening to the newest re-recorded Taylor Swift album, because they probably are, but they're also listening to Hades Town, Wait For Me, on loop. You know how I know? Because that used to be me. And that still is me. I'm not like other theater girls, okay? Like, I've never been the lead or the supporting role. I've always been like a side character or part of the chorus. Seriously, my biggest named role was the March Hare in Alice in Wonderland. I peaked in eighth grade looking like this. And I'm not complaining. This fit was fire. It gave me so much gender. But why do you think I ended up like this? Doing silly little roles and silly little dances when... Silly little Illy cannot dance. Was it because I was the best and everyone was just jealous? God, no. Everyone in my class was really good and really well cast. Was it because I simply wasn't the right person for these bigger roles? No, not necessarily. And there were lots of things I could have tried out for. Was it because I was typecasted and therefore had no shot to begin with? No. I didn't get any big roles in high school theater because I was too scared to even audition for them. I, Alyssa Illumation, chickened out for four years straight. It's gotta be the straightest thing I've ever done. And every time I rationalized it, I told myself, no, don't even bother. You won't get it. Why even consider it? And you know what? I regretted it then and I still regret it now. 10 years later. Oh God. Oh man, I'm old. So, starting with freshman year, my class was gonna do Hairspray the Musical, and we were pumped. Cause, by the way, when I started high school, we got a whole new school built that year. New, as in everyone was getting lost on the first day, even the teachers. And you know what this new school came with? A brand spanking new theater. I'm talking lights, dressing rooms, closets, a freaking ballet studio, what is this, Twilight? And most importantly, a dedicated tech booth with a brand new state-of-the-art soundboard and access to the roof, but you can't go up there and if you do, you're expelled. So the production value of our small town high school musicals was about to explode. Especially because we were gonna make a giant hairspray can, a big old tube. Everyone was so excited for the tube. We watched the movie, we read through the script, we did the state mandated basic busy work we had to complete to prove we took this class and didn't just goof off for an entire semester. And then it was audition week. And the way auditions worked for us was everyone in the class voted for our audition committee and those students along with our teacher decided who got what part. If you were on the audition committee and also auditioning for a role, then your vote for yourself didn't count. I, of course, as a freshman did not make the audition committee because I only really knew my former fellow eighth graders, so. Hey, happy end birthday. And as for who to audition for, well, I wasn't gonna audition for Tracy, the main character, because it's pertinent her character is not played by a person who looks like me. Same goes for literally half the cast. So that narrowed down a couple options. Tracy's best friend, Tracy's rival, or Tracy's rival's mom. So I should have tried out for all of them, right? Wrong. That's what a smart person would do. When I saw who was trying out for those roles, I didn't even bother signing up. They were great. They were perfect fits. I knew they'd end up getting those roles anyway, so, you know, why waste my time? But then we hit a snag. No one auditioned for that mean mom character. No one was interested in it. And she was a fairly sizable role. We couldn't just cut her out. She had her own song and everything. But still, no one cared. So eventually this one girl was like, hey, I got time. I'll do it. And everyone said, wow, thank you so much for stepping up to take on this role. Every role was important, no matter how big or small. We couldn't do this show without you. But me? Uh-uh. I did not say thank you. 
Instead, I complained loudly to my friends that she doesn't even deserve this role because she can't even sing. Like, she sings like crap. Are you talking about my sister? Huh? I said, are you talking about my sister? Uh... And you know what I said when confronted? Uh, me? I, no, I, I didn't say that. I literally just heard you say that. Nah. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Like I said. Coward. And if I could say anything to my younger self now, it would be this. Quit projecting your insecurities onto others, you big f***ing coward. And yes, I did say that. I am so sorry I said that. It was disrespectful, uncalled for, and to this day, I still think about the unnecessary stress I put her under. I hope she is doing well. So, with no roles left to try out for and trust broken with everyone on stage, what did I do? Tech! I got to do music! I got to press play and pause and play and pause for an hour and a half every day up in the tech booth, which had access to the roof, but you can't go up there and if you do, then you're expelled. I was up there with like two other really chill people and oftentimes the teacher just forgot we existed, <laughs> which was fine. We just hung out and goofed off most of the time anyway. We watched YouTube videos, played Flappy Bird, and on set building days, we just got to DJ for everyone. Hey, 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 hey. Insecurity, what does it mean for someone like me? Tired of fighting my reflection every day. I am fighting my reflection. Stop projecting the lies you tell yourself. Wow, this song is so great. I wonder. Is there a way I can listen to the full version? Why yes, YouTuber and musician Caleb Hiles, you can find our song, Sit on the Floor, on Spotify, Apple Music, and wherever else you like to listen. So yeah, doing tech was awesome. And when the night of the show came, we had the best seats in the house. That tube looked incredible. Next was my sophomore year. And my school did this thing where we'd alternate between very well-known musicals and lesser known musicals back and forth every year. So that year, they did Bat Boy the Musical. And I know what you're thinking. Whoa, Bat Boy? Like, Bat Man? Perhaps a musical about Batman's son, the Bat Boy. That would be weird, but hey, musicals are weird. And to that I say, no, I'm sorry, but you are gravely mistaken. Bat Boy is the story of a woman who is attacked by bats, gives birth to a half bat, half human child, abandons him in a cave, later he grows up, makes friends, but then people think he's ugly, so he's outcasted, but then he meets this girl, and she has a crush on him, and they're in love, and oh god, they're siblings? Ew, 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 no, don't kiss, please don't kiss, and honestly, I don't remember what happens after that, but that is why I still insist Cats the Musical is not that bad. But topic for another day. Point is, I remember a bunch of kids, including me, dropping theater that year because the premise of this show just made them uncomfortable. This show, it just... Bat Boy just didn't... It did not hairspray my can, if you know what I mean. But for every flop, there is a flap. Right, Flappy Bird? <gasps> no, it's gone! And then arrived my junior year, where my class put on the best show ever. Everyone who's done theater has that one show they were a part of that was so perfectly casted, so perfectly executed, directed, marketed, choreographed, sung. Everything that could go right for this show went right. And for us, that show was Legally Blonde. Now this show had a ton of possible roles I could audition for. Elle, the lead, Vivian, the antagonist, Paulette, the hairdresser, and so much more. For Elle, I didn't even bother trying out for her because there was someone in the class who was so perfect for the role, we all just basically asked her to be Elle. And Vivian, ugh, she hit some pretty high notes that I could not hit back then, and I probably still can't today without help, but Paulette, now that role I felt pretty good about. She was funny. I was funny. She had a New York accent. I got family in Long Island. And most of all, she's Irish. From Ireland. Wait, no, she's not. She just sings about Ireland. But still, I was perfect for this role. Or so I thought. Ugh. You know when you're trying to fall asleep at night, but you can't because your brain is playing top 10 embarrassing things you've ever done 10 hour edition in 4K? Yeah, this one's like number four for me. It started out great. I walked in there confident, bright, nervous, but nonetheless ready to go. They spoke some lines, I acted along. They said a few more lines. I hit a joke line. They laughed. I smiled. I was doing great. 
And then it was time for the heart-to-heart -heart talk with the main character. All I needed to do was sit and deliver. But when I got to that line, you want to die, you blonde hair brunette? No, no, something else must be happening. Go on, Paulette is listening. I sat on the floor. I sat on the floor. There was a chair next to me for the sitting action and I sat on the floor. I sat crisscross fucking applesauce and I talked to the chair. It, uh, it was so awkward for everyone. I just, uh, I could feel it, man. As I was making my descent, right when my butt hit that glossy hardwood, I could feel it. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, I fucked up. I'm not getting this part. And guess what? I didn't. And I was heartbroken. Maybe it wasn't because of the sitting on the floor thing. Maybe that's just my anxiety ruminating on it years after it happened. But nonetheless, I didn't deserve it anyway. <laughs> but that's okay. It was okay. I'm okay. There were plenty of other roles to try out for. This was a play about sorority girls. So I auditioned to be a Delta New. I went in there, did my lines, sang my song, did not sit on the floor. Good job, me. And I was given the role of... Kate? Wait, who's who's Kate? Kate is the nerdy buzzkill sorority girl who isn't girly girly like all the others. Great. And I shouldn't have taken this personally. I should have taken it like a champ. No matter how small a role is, it is important. They can't do the show without you. But did I take it like a champ? No. I was too caught up in my immature 16-year-old feelings and I asked the directors and my teacher if this was some kind of mistake. And they were like, Oh, no, 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 no. We, we cast you as Kate because we think you'll do a good job in this role. Oh, okay. Well, just, I... Do you not want it? Well... Because uh... if you don't want it, we can give it to someone else. Uh, no, 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 that's okay. Sorry. I'll take it. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, okay. Ow! Yeah, that's right. Be grateful. Kate has a solo for crying out loud. That's embarrassing moment number three, by the way. But like I said, best show we ever did. Packed house every night, record-breaking ticket sales, and I remember someone let us borrow their chihuahua? We had a real dog on stage. Like, watch out, Broadway. And lastly, in my senior year of high school, we did Bye Bye Birdie, which is basically like... Here's what would happen if Harry Styles was drafted into war. The fangirls would be a wreck. And then... Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't remember what happens in this play. <laughs> Again, I'm sad to report I did not learn my lesson from Legally Blonde. Uh, sitting on the floor? No, not that one. Um, I meant the whole trying out for only one part and then crying when I didn't get it. You know why I pulled you over? <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, I was cast at chorus again. <laughs> Though I did have a small role where my character was hired by the main character's mom to seduce him by tap dancing very badly and pulling little American flags out of my tube was still there. I did a quick change in that tube. Man, love that tube. Good prop. So yeah, if you're auditioning for something, anything, don't be like me. Don't keep yourself from trying new things because you're afraid to fail. Because you're gonna grow up to regret it and your future self will slap you. Thank you for watching my videos. Make sure to check out Caleb Hiles. He did a great job doing lines in this video. Hit like if you liked it, subscribe to see more, and as always, stay safe.